Hello comrades and welcome back to Marxist Voice, the podcast of the communist. So we've only got less than three weeks to go until the founding congress of the RCP, so the clock is ticking. Uh, but I've seen a, a real flurry of activity across the section of uh, yeah, recruitment, education, fundraising and so on, so I think we're definitely in good stead for that. Uh, for this week's episode, we're going to be focusing on the question of the international, why we need an international, uh, and also yeah, the launch of the Revolutionary Communist International, which will be taking place uh, this June. So we're very pleased uh, to ha- be joined by uh, Jorge Martin, who is a member of the International Secretariat of the soon-to-be Revolutionary Communist International, as well as a writer for Marxist.com and the magazine In Defense of Marxism. Hi, Jorge. How's it going? Uh, yeah, fine, fine. Um, I've been I've been busy. Uh, one of the things I've been doing is I've been working on a, on an article which has appeared now on the, in in Defense of Marxism magazine, the latest issue about Franz Fanon, which was very very interesting mm. to research. I have learned a lot. Uh, yeah. I have to say, yeah. Yeah, I remember you spoke about that at the recent Revolution Festival, didn't you? Last yes. year, what was it that you were reading in particular? Was it works by Franz Fanon himself? Yeah, or, I, read, uh, I read quite a lot of Franz Fanon and a few a few of the biographies. There are some that are better than others, but uh, I found it very interesting. I knew I knew very little about the Algerian Revolution, and also Franz Fanon has been completely distorted in mm. academia and, yes, and in post-colonial uh, uh, circles. So I, I I disagree with quite a, quite a few of the of the things that Fanon said about strategy and so on, but uh, Fanon really really if you read Fanon it has nothing to do with the ideas that have been uh, ascribed to him by mm. by many ideas of decolonizing the mind mm. or anything like this. For Fanon was not about. Uh, changing people's minds in order to liberate themselves, but uh, through the process of actual revolutionary struggle for liberation, people will change. That, that's, that was his argument. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I found it very interesting. And also about the role of Stalinism in the Algerian uh, war, the, the, the French Communist Party played a dreadful role. It was very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember myself, actually, when I studied politics at university in, uh, in Leeds, I remember Franz Fanon was on the, uh, on, on the syllabus for one of the courses that we did. And yeah, they really try and uh, emphasize and yeah, as you said, distort all of the, the weak sides of, of Fanon, completely neglecting the fact that yeah, he was uh, a revolutionary. Yeah, they totally focus on essentially this, uh, this postmodern idea you know, of changing your consciousness and therefore changing the world and so on. Uh, so yeah, I think that is something that is quite prevalent uh, in academia. In fact, they use yeah. the, the, the one text that they use the most is uh, bl- Black Skin's White mm-hmm. Mask, yeah. which uh, is, a, uh, is, is a text that he wrote as his thesis for his studies in psychiatry. It wasn't meant to be a political text or anything like this. It, it does analyze from a psychiatric point of view the impact of colonization and racism on, on people's consciousness. But it doesn't advocate any solutions or any course of action. It's not a, it's not a book of, uh, of revolutionary strategy, but, but it's mm. been taken as, as such by some people who have nothing to do with revolutionary strategy yeah. at all. Yeah. yeah, well, I look forward to reading the article. And uh, yeah, while we're on the subject, actually, yeah, in defense of Marxism issue, is it 45 now? I can't remember. 45. Yeah, 45. Is, uh, is out now, actually. It arrived in the office uh, this week. So do you want to maybe just go through you know, what the focus of well, this it issue ha- is? Well, it has a very interesting, very nice cover, very striking mm, cover indeed. again. Uh, the, the main focus is the African uh, Revolution. There is an article by... Well, there's an editorial by Alan or precisely on the question of why we need a revolutionary communist international. But then there's a very interesting article by, by Ben Curry on the Ethiopian Revolution, mm-hmm. 50th anniversary this year about which I knew very little and I found very, very interesting. Then there's my article on Franz Fanon's... It's not, it's not about his whole life and ideas, but it's mainly about uh, the wretched of the earth, mm. his main text of revolutionary strategy. Then there is a text by uh, Jules Legendre, a comrade from, uh, from France, about the crimes of French imperialism mm-hmm. in Cameroon, which I also found very interesting. I knew very little about it. And this... While the Algerian war is more well known in France and, and uh, elsewhere, but the struggle for independence of, uh, of Cameroon and, and the crimes of French imperialism in Cameroon are, are not very well known. I've, I found it very interesting. And there's a couple of uh, reprints from Trotsky and, and Lenin. Lenin's thesis on the colonial question yeah. for, the, for the Communist International, the Second Congress, which is very interesting. 
and also a very little known text by Trotsky about the slogan of a black republic in South Africa. And he, he writes a letter to uh, uh, South African revolutionaries commenting on this, on this debate about, about this question, which I think is very relevant for, for today. I think it's interesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, definitely, yes. Yeah. So if listeners want to get their hands on a copy of the In Defense of Marxism magazine, then we would definitely urge you to do so. If you head to communist.red forward slash subscribe or forward slash magazine, yeah, you can set up a subscription there and you can also get a combination deal uh, tied in with the communist newspaper. It's called the Full Communist Package, which I really like. <laughs> and yeah, if you're anywhere else in, in uh, outside of uh, Britain or the UK, then yeah, you can head to marxist.com and find out more information there. But yeah, how about we jump in then to the main topic of discussion for today, uh, which is, yeah, why do we need an international? What would you say to that? Well, for the, the, the basic idea is uh, the capitalist system is a worldwide system. Uh, as Marx and Engels already explained in the Communist Manifesto, uh, capitalism conquers the whole world, brings the whole world and its, its uh, domination and creates world uh, politics, world culture, world economy. Therefore, the, the socialist transformation of society can only be international. And uh, from the very beginning of our movement, our movement is international. One of the first things that Marx and Engels did was to create the International Working Men's Association, mm. the first international organization for, for gathering together the forces of the workers' uh, movement. So that's, that's, I would say, the first and foremost reason for why we need an international. If you're a communist, if you're a revolutionary, you can't just think about changing society in one country. Uh, it's, it's not possible and uh, it's not feasible. It doesn't correspond to material reality. I will say that's the first one. The second one reason why we need an international is because there isn't one. Uh, there is no international communist organization today as it might have existed in the, in the past. You, you had the first international, the second international, the third international. You had the fourth international, which, which never fully developed. But at, at most times in history, you had one or, or perhaps even two. You had a communist international. At the same time, you had a reformist international. Mm -hmm. But right now, there is no such thing. There is, there is no international organization dedicated to the, to the revolutionary transformation of society. And we think that one is completely required and we're going we're gonna to take steps towards uh, that end. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, we recently had an episode on our podcast uh, borrowed from the specter of communism uh, where Fred Weston uh, gave a really, really good detailed history actually of uh, yeah, uh, the international from Marx to Lenin, looking at the mm -hmm. lessons of the communist international as well. I really like that episode. So yeah, if comrades want to check that out, head to the, the previous episode and give it a listen. Um, but yeah, we've been organized as the international Marxist tendency now since what, 1992, I believe. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Why are we launching? Although the original name of the international was the, was the Committee for a Marxist International, uh -huh. uh, we changed to International Marxist Tendency, but I can't I can't remember the the year in the in the late mid nineteen nineties, oh. perhaps something like that. I didn't know that you learn something <laughs> new every day. Yeah, but why is it that we've decided to launch the Revolutionary Communist International now in twenty twenty four? What's yeah, we think, we think that the step forward is uh, required. You see, at, at the time of the, of the 2008 crisis, which was a turning point for world capitalism, there was uh, a massive revulsion against the austerity measures that followed. The banks had been bailed out. State money had been used to save the capitalist economy. And now working people were being made to pay. And there were big movements everywhere. Uh, you had uh, the, 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 the 15M Indignados movement in Spain, the Syntagma Square occupation in Greece. And out of these massive movements, big anti-austerity demonstrations in, in Britain, and out of these movements, the, the Arab Spring, which was also part yeah, of, of the same uh, process. But out of these whole uh, movements, the, the political expression that came out of that was a whole number of new political formations that uh, were claiming to be anti-austerity. They were, in a, in a confused way, articulating this anti-capitalist feeling. Mm. Podemos in Spain, Syriza in uh, Greece, Corbyn here in Britain, and uh, Sanders in the United States, Mélenchon in France. But the problem with these uh, formations that became very popular and hundreds of thousands of people joined these uh, movements is that they, they uh, spoke very, in very radical terms opposition to everything that's existing and so on. But deep down, the program was not really a, a program to overthrow capitalism. It was a, a program to introduce a series of reforms 
and uh, measures within the limits of capitalism, mm -hmm. like tax the rich, spend more in, in uh, healthcare and education, without realizing that within the limits of capitalism, most of these reforms were impossible to carry out. So therefore, as a consequence, most of these uh, movements ended up betraying the aspirations of the people who, who uh, supported them. The most uh, striking case was Syriza in mm -hmm. Greece, came to power in January, January, February 2015. And in six months, on the basis of anti-austerity program, uh, rejection of the memorandum of the Troika, mm -hmm. the Troika being the, the European, uh, the European uh, Union, the IMF and, and the European Central Bank, and which had imposed these this, uh, limits to uh, spending, fiscal austerity and so on. So they came to power on the basis of that program, rejection of austerity, in six months' time, they completely capitulated and started implementing this uh, program, despite the fact that the majority of the Greek people had voted against the, refer the, the memorandum in, in, a, in a national referendum. So basically, what we see is the, the limits of reformism, reformism, uh, reformism in the epoch of capitalist crisis is reformism without reforms, mm -hmm. or rather reformism with counter-reforms. Uh, throughout that period of time, the IMT, the International Marxist Tendency, was part of these movements. Mm -hmm. Part of these movements because we wanted to connect with hundreds of thousands of people who started in, in the process of, of rejecting capitalism, always maintaining our criticism. We, we never abandoned our program. Mm -hmm. We warned from the beginning that yes, we are against austerity, but in order to really overcome, that austerity does come from the crisis of capitalism. It's, it's not uh, the whim of this or that other politician mm -hmm. Uh, that wants to introduce cuts, but, but this is inherent in the crisis of capitalism. And therefore, the solution is to overthrow capitalism. We always proposed uh, and put forward a communist uh, point of view, a revolutionary point of view. Uh, but now all these movements have collapsed mm. and they have betrayed because of their own weakness or, or rather the weakness of their leaders and the ideas that were at the, at the leadership of these movements. And there's a new generation of uh, people who have lived through this period. I mean, 2008 is now what? Um, uh, My math is 14. <laughs> well, no, no, not 14. Is, is, is it 16 years ago? Yeah, 16, 16 years yeah. ago. Anyone who is now, say, 25, under 25 or mm. under 30, like me, for example, like yourself, I not, was not myself, happened, yeah. <laughs> uh, have lived all their lives in this particular mm. period of capitalism crisis, uh, war, imperialism. Uh, the impact of the COVID pandemic, which re revealed the inability of capitalism uh, and, uh, to, to deal with, with uh, serious emergency health emergency problem. And uh, they have also lived through the experience of this previous wave of, of mm -hmm. struggle and, and politicization. And they, many of them have no time for this. And, yeah. and, uh, and there's a rejection even of the idea of socialism, which has become associated with people like Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. Uh, and people like that, who in the end capitulated and supported Clinton, uh, supported the Democratic, pa the Capitalist Democratic Party. Uh, in effect, they support Biden and so on. So there's a whole layer of people now, uh, particularly young people, students, workers, and so on, who are moving towards the, the ideas of communism. Mm -hmm. And we think that the time is, is right for the IMT to take a step forward, a qualitative uh, leap, have, have a clear communist uh, uh, identity to go with our ideas and to try to connect with this uh, mood that exists, try to offer this layer of people an organization where they can uh, uh, develop their ideas, mm -hmm. be educated theoretically and participate in a worldwide struggle for communism. This is the idea behind, behind the launch of the Revolutionary Communist uh, International, which is already in, in its early stages, but it's already had a big uh, impact uh, everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, this process of, of, of relaunching the organization isn't just taking place like on an international scale, it's also taking place within each of the individual uh, national sections of the of the RCI. I um, mean, you know, we've got examples, like obviously here in Britain, we're launching the Revolutionary Communist Party uh, uh, next month, hence, hence this podcast series. But also, yeah, you've got examples like Switzerland, Sweden, Denmark, Canada, uh, you know, Brazil, across across the world, basically. I was wondering, maybe, if you want to go into any of the uh, 
the recent successes, anything that stands out uh, from this uh, from this campaign that we've launched? Yeah, definitely. This this is a process that's taking place everywhere. It it, it might be at different stages of its development in mm -hmm. different countries. I, I will argue, for instance, that the, the move towards communism is more advanced in countries like, say, the United States or Brazil, where you've had already in power yeah. right-wing demagogues who, who are calling everyone a communist. Yeah. They're calling Biden a communist. They're calling anyone who's in opposition a communist. And this has uh, increased the interest yeah. for communist ideas, uh, yeah. uh, ironically. Inadvertently, it's made it less scary because it's such a common that's uh, phrase. Right, that's yeah. used, and yeah. also, there's another factor that, I mean, the, the, the fall of Stalinism was when? 30, 30, 35 years ago. Yeah. Uh, this is ancient history for most people. Uh, communism is no longer scary. I mean, the, the, even, even in the United States, where there's been decades of an anti-communist scare campaign, uh, this doesn't cut mustard with with most young people who mm. who instead of the crisis of capital instead of the crisis of cap of of uh, communism which is in reality the crisis of Stalinism, what they have lived through all their lives is the crisis of capitalism. Mm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, going back to your question, uh, we have been very successful. Uh, hundreds of uh, people are joining the, the the different national sections of the of the of the IMT, soon to be the Revolutionary Communist International. Mm -hmm. On uh, Saturday, for instance, the comrades in Canada, which are, which are launching the Revolutionary Communist Party as well, and under the same name, they had rallies across the country to announce a new party. And, uh, and these were very successful. I think there must have been 200 or more in Toronto, 200 or more in Montreal, and then mm -hmm. smaller rallies all across the country. This is, is a national organization. This is probably the biggest communist organization that's ever been in Canada for, for many decades, which says a lot about, yeah. about the weakness of, of the communist left in, in Canada, but also of the genuine interest that there is about uh, communism. Also at the weekend, we had the, the, the Congress of the Irish section. Mm -hmm. This is a small group of comrades, but one that has, I think, more than traveled in membership in one, in one uh, year. More than that, I think they've timed More their membership that. by seven, actually. They by started seven, out with yeah. five people uh, at the start of the, the last year, I think, and yeah, now they're 35 right. paid up members. 35 yeah. comrades. Uh, this is obviously a very small force, but you can see that there's been an exponential mm. uh, growth. And it shows that everywhere there is an interest for communism and we are, we are connecting with, with, uh, with it. Uh, also, at the weekend, the, the U.S. comrades had the launch of their new paper, which is called The Communist, as, yeah. as, in, as in Britain. <laughs> and they marked that with big rallies in, in some places, in Seattle, in uh, Philadelphia, in Minneapolis, in uh, New York, uh, big public meetings, then big rallies, and then big paper sales. Uh, hundreds of papers were sold in, uh, in Seattle alone, I think. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, I, I find it very interesting for, for, for anyone who's a communist, the growth of a communist organization in the United States is particularly mm -hmm. interesting. You, you, uh, you get this, this idea of uh, sometimes in the left that, that the United States is one reactionary pro-imperialist yeah. bloc. Uh, and it's not. Things are changing in the United States as well. And amongst many young people, not only students, but also young workers. We have comrades who work at uh, UPS, uh, we have building workers, uh, auto workers, and so on, that are being inter becoming interested in the idea of, uh, of communism, most definitely. And, and, uh, and the general mood in the United States is one where people say that no one thinks that the system is working. Uh, people might have different ideas about how, what to do about it, but no one thinks that the system is working and, and a sizable minority thinks that the solution is an overhaul of the whole uh, system and the struggle for communism. And yes, in, in this context, we, we are having a successful uh, campaign. This campaign, the Are You a Communist campaign, of asking people directly, if you are a mm -hmm. communist, you need to get organized. It's been going on now for a year or just over a year. I think it started in April last, yeah. last year started in Britain and then it spread internationally, but everywhere, as you say, in, in Sweden, in Denmark, in Switzerland, most unlikely place <laughs> of all, in Brazil, everywhere uh, is, is having a big impact. And uh, yeah, I would say people are flocking to our uh, ranks. We have to have a sense of proportion. We're still a small organization, yeah, but I, I'd say that the growth that the IMT has had in the last one year is very significant. It's the fastest rate of growth uh, that we've ever had, really. 
yeah, well, the future definitely bodes well, I think, in that regard. And yeah, just to bring it back to the, the Irish Congress, I was speaking to a comrade who was actually a visitor to the Congress. And he said the, the excitement, the determination was really palpable uh, in the room. Like All of the comrades feel like they are part, uh, you know, they feel responsible for, for, for carrying these tasks out. They discuss the political documents, the political perspectives, the organizational tasks and so on. And yeah, I think the, the goals that they set for themselves were incredibly audacious. They've set themselves the target, I think, of uh, having 100 comrades uh, in, the, in the Irish, uh, in, in, on the island of Ireland, uh, both in the north and the south, uh, by their next Congress at the same time next year, and also to fund uh, their first ever full-time revolutionary, which I think would be a huge step for them. And it's basically come uh, out, out of nowhere. As I said, five, five comrades at the start of, uh, of last year, look at what can be achieved. On the basis of yeah of audacity of a, of a strong understanding of the ideas of Marxism, uh, and and so on. So yeah, if comrades want to read more about that, um, I'm sure there'll be a report uh, online yes. uh, fairly fairly soon. I will I I will echo your point that uh, audacity and boldness is is extremely important, and with that you can you can build because because these these people are out there. Mm -hmm. There are people who already consider themselves communists in one way or, or another. They might not. They might not have a fully rounded understanding of Marxist theory, might not have read a lot, uh, although some of them have, have well read. Yeah. Uh, people instinctively been reading Lenin, Marx, and so on. Uh, and and that's, that's the key to our success. But I will say there is another, there is another pillar to this, and, and that's the, the question of the importance of theory. Mm. Uh, it's not enough to be enthusiastic. It's not enough to want to transform the, the world. As Lenin said, Without revolutionary theory, there is no revolutionary movement. And I mm -hmm. would like to plug the Lenin book that we have published. Yes, Lenin book by uh, Rob Sewell and, and Alan Woods is a, is a biography of Lenin. But it's really, it's not a biography, it's called In Defense of Lenin. Mm -hmm. I, it's, in the, it's, it's, a, it's a biography, but it's also a history of his ideas, the political struggles uh, that he was involved in. And I think it's an, it's an excellent tool. If you read this book, you will, uh, you will be well educated on a whole number of different uh, subjects mm. about how to build a party, a whole number of debates about imperialism, mm. uh, the question of the national question, mm. the Russian revolution, the debates after the revolution, the struggle of Lenin against uh, bureaucratism. Mm. I'm, I'm currently uh, revising the translation into Spanish of the book, which mm -hmm. allows me to go more into detail in, in, into the book. And I will say that, uh, yeah, anyone who's joined the, the Revolutionary Communist International, the Revolutionary Communist Party uh, recently, they should read this book. Anyone who's been in the movement for a long time, they should also read yeah. this uh, book because they will learn uh, a lot, myself, myself included. And I will, um, yeah, I strongly recommend it. Um, as you say, enthusiasm is the basis on which we grow and uh, allows us to uh, go forward. But that needs to be combined with, with a serious grounding on, on Marxist theory. And I will say that the, the In Defense of Lenin book is a, is a very good place to, to start. Yeah, definitely. I'd like to echo that as well. And if comrades would like to get their hands on a copy of that, you can head to wellreadbooks.co.uk if you're in Britain. Um, yeah, I'd like to move on then to a question that we've received uh, from a listener, actually, uh, who wants to know a bit about how the international works in practice, how it relates to the different national sections. So I'll just play that now, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Hello, comrades. This is Eric from the Croydon Communists. I hope you're doing well. Uh, recently, our branch created a new TikTok page, and we've gotten messages from across the world uh, from uh, Chile to Azerbaijan to uh, Kazakhstan to even Madagascar. And my question was, um, how does our uh, national section of the IMT, uh, soon to be RCI, interact with these different uh, sections of the international? Thank you. Yeah, I think that's a great question, Eric. Thanks for sending that in. And yeah, it's great to hear that you're having success using social media to build the party. But yeah, what do you think? How, how do the different national sections of the, of the RCI relate to each other? Yeah, I will say that um, this is a very important question because uh, the, the way we organize, we, we, we're not just a collection, a federal grouping or, or a collection of national organizations that come together once a year and, and uh, we have similar ideas. No, no, no. We, we are a world party. We're the world party of socialist revolution. And this is how it was always uh, conceived. 
Mm -hmm. The third international was a world, a world party, and, and they mm -hmm. had meetings in, in, the, in the Communist International Congress, which lasted for two, three weeks. They had, say, a commission on the, on the work of the French party. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the Communist International as a whole uh, looked at that and issued uh, advice and instructions and, and, and mm -hmm. political discussions about the most important things that were happening around the world and how the different national sections were intervening in, in those. So, yeah. We are, a, we are an international party. And how does that work? Well, where we base ourselves on, on the Leninist idea of democratic centralism. Mm -hmm. Democratic centralism also applies at an international mm -hmm. level. So therefore, the IMT, and now, now the Revolutionary Communist International, has a World Congress, which meets every two years. In this case, we're now meeting one year from the last World Congress, because mm -hmm. important changes are, are taking place. But the, the International Congress, uh, the World Congress meets every two years with delegates elected by all the national sections in proportion to their membership. And uh, there are documents that are produced in, in advance. These documents are discussed throughout the membership of the whole international. The most important political questions are put to the debate. Uh, comrades and uh, uh, delegates, national sections are free to present uh, amendments, changes, uh, alternative uh, documents if, mm -hmm. if need be. And these are fully discussed at the World Congress. Finally, a joint political understanding is arrived at. Documents are, are, are finalized and, and voted democratically. Mm -hmm. And that becomes the line of the, of the international for, for, the, for the next two years. In between international world congresses, there, there's an international executive committee, which meets every, every six months, approximately, mm -hmm. and, and decides on all important matters in between world congresses. And then there is a permanent international uh, secretariat ba based here in, in London, which leads politically the international on a day-to-day -day basis, issues statements about important things happening in the world, say the, the Israeli assault on, on Gaza, the war in Ukraine and things like this as and when this uh, happened. So basically, yes, we are, we are a world party of socialist revolution. And that, that gives us, uh, I would say it gives us uh, a lot of strength and, and makes us superior to other organizations which have a narrow national point of view. Mm -hmm. Or they may, may be part of some international grouping, mm -hmm. but a, a grouping in which every national section does whatever they want mm -hmm. uh, without any regard or reference to international uh, joint discussion. Mm -hmm. This also allows us to pull together the experience of comrades, communists, intervening in the movement in different countries, yeah. uh, see, see what are the common threats, what can we learn from each other? Um, yeah, that, that's the idea of mm -hmm. a world uh, party. That, that's how the IMT organizes. That's how the, the Revolutionary Communist International will organize. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sorry, as of its founding Congress, which is taking place in June, as, as you said earlier, mm -hmm. from the 9th to the 16th of June, mm -hmm. the, 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 the founding of the, of the inter International Revolutionary Communist International will take place at the World Congress, which will be uh, broadcast live internationally. Mm. The, the Congress will have a part which is the discussion of our documents, chiefly the manifesto of the Revolutionary Communist International, which I recommend everyone to read. It's been published in, in advance. Uh, a discussion about organization, but also we'll have another part which we call the World School of Communism, Indeed. which is a, a four-day discussion with, with over, over 15 or 20 discussions. Well, 21, I think. Is 21 yeah. discussions. <laughs> about different aspects of revolutionary communist uh, theory, which mm -hmm. will also be broadcast online and which people can attend um, fr from the comfort of the, of the, of the front uh, room, uh, but also at uh, watch parties, collective watching events that we're organizing all over the world. And, mm -hmm. and I will really uh, recommend people to, to attend, encourage yeah. people to attend, to register. I think the website is worldschoolofcommunism.com. I think it's just schoolofcommunism.com. Oh, sorry, yeah. School of, <laughs> schoolofcommunism.com. Yeah. Uh, and you can go there. There's a list of all the, of all the talks, but also reading material mm -hmm. that you can uh, uh, use in order to prepare for these discussions. And there's the dates. There's all the details uh, are in there. It will also be translated into a whole number of different uh, languages. So it will be a really, uh, a really exciting wholly international uh, yeah. event in its character. Yeah, the array of talks does look very interesting. And I see you've got things covering philosophy, dialectics, materialism, uh, economics, the Russian Revolution, and why it degenerated into Stalinism, uh, you know, various you know, uh, talks about history, 
oppression, the national question, strategy and tactics, war and imperialism, the state, yeah. the list goes on. I think it's going to be a really fantastic and event. Many, many of these things have an historical character. For instance, mm -hmm. the discussion on war and imperialism is based on, on Lenin's writings during the First World War, but mm -hmm. they also have an implication for today, mm -hmm. the position that one takes in relation to the war in Ukraine, mm -hmm. the position one takes in relation to the Middle East and, mm -hmm. and so on. This is informed. It's not necessarily directly determined, but, but if you don't understand the history of the movement and the theoretical discussions that have gone on before, mm -hmm. you'll probably be lost yeah. uh, in taking a position today. Yeah, and it really is going to be a truly international event as well. I've just been looking actually recently at the list of uh, different uh, countries from which people have signed up to attend this event. You've got uh, This is just a, a selection of uh, random ones. Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Chile, China, Egypt, Haiti, India, Indonesia, Iraq. Myanmar, New Zealand, Saudi Arabia, Thailand, Zimbabwe, the list goes on. You know, we're going to have people from literally every single continent there. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And yeah, once again, schoolofcommunism.com if you want to sign up. But yeah, I want to move on to uh, another question, perhaps our last question, maybe of, of the day. So yeah, you mentioned that you, we have uh, an international center. That's what you what you work for. Maybe our listeners would like to know, what is it the international center does? You know, what, what do they uh, produce? What do they do in their day-to-day -day, uh, work? Yeah, what, what, what's that look like? Yeah, the, the, obviously the, the um, Revolutionary Communist International, the IMT up until now, is, is quite a large organization with, with sections in... in uh, how many sections do we have? More, more than 30. Count. <laughs> more than 30. We have more than 30 countries where there are formal sections already, but we have work in over 60 countries around the, around the world at different uh, levels of, of development. And so obviously there's, there's a whole number of logistics and technical, logistic and technical aspects of this, like the organizing of world events, the organizing of international meetings, the coordination of the work of all the sections. But first and foremost, our work is uh, political, the development of uh, political analysis, political ideas and political education, uh, which is the basis of, of the existence of the, of the Revolutionary Communist International, really. And so we produce uh, uh, the International Center is in charge of the production of the of the books. Mm. Uh, well read is becoming the, the foremost uh, um, publisher of Marxist literature, not mm. only our own material, but also the classics of Marxism, which is no longer published by, by anybody else, really. Uh, the publication of the magazine, the theoretical magazine, which comes out quarterly in defense of Marxism, which is also published in a whole host of different languages, yeah. French, mm. German, Spanish, Portuguese, uh, Urdu in, in Pakistan, Russian, and a whole number of Italian, a whole number of other languages translated into. The, um, the publication of the daily website of the international, Marxist.com, uh, which is uh, a, a, a varied uh, collection of rep historical reprints, but, but mostly uh, political analysis of what's happening today, mm -hmm. in-depth political analysis of say the recent elections in Turkey, the development of the war in uh, Ukraine, the massacre in Gaza, uh, from a communist point of view, giving not only analysis, but also answers and, and slogans that are appropriate for, for the agitation in relation to these questions. This, this is really the main uh, work of the International, of the international Center of the, of the IMT, soon to be Revolutionary Communist International. Uh, and on top of this, obviously, we uh, comrades visit the congresses and national meetings of the different uh, sections to uh, discuss with the comrades uh, their work, uh, generalize the lessons and so on. But I would say that the, ma the main work of the International Secretariat, the International Center of the, of the IMT is, is first and foremost pol the development of the political ideas, the mm -hmm. de development of the theoretical uh, uh, level of, uh, of understanding, which really is what it's the glue that keeps the, the international together. Well, what unites us is not, is not an apparatus or, or, or anything like this. What unites us is, is common ideas, a common understanding, common communist, Leninist uh, uh, ideas of, of how to the, the need to transform society, the inevitable crisis of capitalism, uh, and the need for a socialist uh, revolution. Yeah, well, thanks for explaining that. I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over in this episode. Is there anything that you'd like to highlight before we finish? Yeah, there's just one point maybe is worth mentioning that uh, so some people might say, okay, you, you're launching a revolutionary communist international, but, but uh, is this the right time or, or are there all the communist organizations out there? And I will say that 
um, one of the main characteristics of the present situation is, is the enormous crisis that exists in the, in the communist, uh, in the communist uh, movement. There are still communist parties that call themselves the, the, by, by this name, but most of these have really long time ago abandoned any genuine idea of communism or, or Leninism. You have, you have, for instance, the, the Communist Party of Britain, which, which in its British Road to Socialism talks about, is it three different stages? <laughs> uh, first, you have to have a left coalition government, then, then something else. And it's really, it's really not, not a revolutionary communist yeah. uh, approach to things. Country, yeah. Or you have the Communist Party in Spain, which still calls itself communist, sometimes signs a statement saying we're for socialism. But they are part of a coalition government with the mm. Socialist Party, which is, which is part of NATO, sending arms to Ukraine uh, and so on. Or, or, you, or even worse, you have the Communist Party of the Russian Federation, which is basically just an, an appendix of, yeah. of uh, Putin's imperialist policy in Ukraine. Or, or even worse, if there's a big competition for which is the, <laughs> which is the party that's most abandoned communist principles, for furthest, uh, has moved furthest from, from them. The Communist Party of the United States, which, ah, is, yes. which is basically an election, left wing of the Democratic Party, electoral, <laughs> electoral machine for voting for Biden. And the excuse that of oh, Trump is fascism, then we must fight against fascism by voting for whom? For a capitalist uh, party that's responsible for the genocide in, uh, in Gaza, mm -hmm. you know. So, so there is a big crisis in the communist uh, movement. There are some forces within mm -hmm. what you will call the communist movement that are trying to resist like this, in Greece, for example, this this collapse into national reformism and chauvinism. Amongst them is the, is the Communist Party of uh, of Greece. There's also been a big split in the Communist Party in the Brazilian Communist Party, uh, and there's a group of comrades that are fighting for the, what they call revolutionary re reconstruction, revolutionary refoundation of that party. We, we're in discussions with them. And uh, yeah, I mean, we do have uh, differences with the, with the Communist Party of Greece, but at least it has to be said that, for instance, on, on the war in Ukraine, they have taken a principled position. They say, mm -hmm. we oppose NATO. Uh, we consider this uh, uh, not just in words, but also in deeds. And uh, we consider this an inter-imperialist war, and therefore we're not in favor of, uh, of uh, Russia. There's a whole number of communist parties, or so-called communist parties in the world, that basically act as cheerleaders for Russia and China, uh, which are supposed to be the beginning of a multipolar wall. Anyway, there's a complete crisis in the communist movement. And I think that that is also one of the reasons which makes the launching of the Revolutionary Communist International so timely. We want to open a debate with anyone in the communist movement who, who stands for the ideas of, of genuine communism, mm -hmm. the ideas of Lenin. And we might have other differences, but, but let's, let's open a, a, a dialogue. Uh, these are our ideas expressed in the manifesto. We're putting them out there. And we like other people to comment on them, see whether there's agreement, disagreement, whether there's agreement on fundamental questions, other questions mm -hmm. we can discuss. Uh, I think that this is also very, uh, very important in terms of the, the, the need for the launch of a revolutionary communist international. Thanks for explaining that, Jorge. And uh, yeah, if, if listeners would like to get their hands on a, on a copy of the Revolutionary Communist International's manifesto, it will be in print, I believe, very soon. But there's also a version that is online on marxist.com. So the link to that will be in the show notes of this podcast. So yeah, I think that brings us to the end of this episode. So thanks very much to our listeners for tuning in. And thank you, Jorge, for, uh, for joining us. It was a pleasure. Yeah, and before you uh, leave, just a few quick announcements. So as always, if you agree with the ideas that have been explained on this podcast series and other podcasts like it, if you're a communist and you want to get organized to overthrow capitalism once and for all, then yeah, you should definitely join the Revolutionary Communist International. If you head to the link in the show notes of this podcast, you can fill in our application form so we can put you in touch with your nearest branch or cell. And if there's no one near you, then we'll give you all of the tools and the support that you need to build a communist cell of your own. As well as that, if you'd like to support the work that we're doing here in the Revolutionary Communist Party, you can also donate to us as well. If you want to give a one-off donation towards our special party launch fund, you're more than welcome to do so. But in particular, if you'd like to set up a regular donation to finance the work that our party is doing and put it on a strong material foundation, then you can do that as well. And you can also subscribe to our newspaper, The Communist, and our theoretical magazine, In Defense of Marxism. Finally, our Congress is only less than three weeks uh, away. Uh, and if you'd like to attend that, 
then you should uh, get in touch with your nearest branch of the RCP and find out more. It's going to be a very exciting event with hundreds of delegates and visitors from across the country where we're going to be discussing our key political documents and perspectives as well as organizational tasks as well. So yeah, uh, get in touch with your nearest branch to find out more. And one last thing, please make sure to send in any questions, reports and feedback to this podcast series and we might include it on the next episode. So thanks very much once again to our listeners for tuning in and make sure you stay tuned to Marxist Voice for future episodes covering Marxist theory, revolutionary history, current events and party building brought to you by The Communist. <laughs>